Afternoon, everybody. This is Tim Kraus. Today's the 14th of June, 2022. Goodness, we're about halfway through the year, 2022. I'm here in my prison garb again. Uh, just wanted to just wanted to uh, do a little update. Um, we're gonna now. Now, in the last couple of weeks, we've talked about a couple of things, and w what I said was that we were going to show some some e examples some documented examples of where Isaac behaves or how Isaac behaves. We've been going through this now. We've got a lot to show today. I wanted to give everybody a heads up. The reason that we haven't been on uh, until now, there was a pretty good gap between the last video and today, was because we wanted to make sure that we had all of our documentation lined up. We wanted to make sure we were exactly correct in terms of our documentation. We, we are solid in that. We put that into place. Uh, this is going to be called Isaac's Business Model, Golden Dawn. We're going to use the methodology that we always use, Isaiah 28.10, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. And also, 2 Corinthians 13.1, in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. So... Uh, I, I want, I'm going to show today an example of Isaac's business model. Um, you see, Isaac favors certain businesses with loans, and it tends to be the ones that he feels like are going to make significant amounts of money. I, I'm, I'm going to give you a lot of information up here in the study notes, but I'm also going to make all of that available to you on my Google Drive. I'll put the links in the description, as I always do. Um, but you'll see here th this what I, I'm gonna, I'm putting up here a promissory note. This is an example of a real promissory note executed by Isaac and a business owner. In this particular case, Isaac lent the business owner uh, fifty five thousand eight hundred fifty nine dollars and three cents. No interest, no interest payment. Okay. Um, and th there will be no interest accruing on the unpaid balance at the rate of 0% per annum. Um, and it, it, it talks about payments. It talks about payments. The full balance of this note is due and payable on the 8th day of August 2024, here and after known as the due date. The borrower shall pay towards principal in the amount of $1,000 on a monthly basis with any remaining balance on the due date. The due date is in August 2024, balloon payment. So if, if none of it's, if, if there's any of it that remains on August 2024, then there's a balloon payment that's due for the balance of the remainder. No security interest because we don't, no security interest here. And the borrower can prepay this note without penalty. This was executed in 2019. And I no interest. I, Isaac would tell you, see, look, I followed scripture. I, I charge no interest on any of these loans, any of the money that I give to these people. I'm just out of the out of the goodness of my heart. I'm doing this. There's no interest involved. I do this because I care for the people. I do this because I want them to be a success. And, and he would be following Exodus chapter 22, verse 25. If you lend money to my people, to the poorest person among you, you must not be like a money lender to him. You must not charge him interest. And Deuteronomy 23, 19, do not charge your brother interest on money, food, or anything that can earn interest. And this is sort of true. Isaac doesn't, and we just saw the promissory note, no interest. So, you know, there's no interest to be paid. So it's kind of true. It's sort of true. Let's talk about what I mean by that. Here, here's a business model. This is Isaac's business model. I have this on the authority of people who Isaac have lent money to, lent the money to. This I'm, I'm putting it up here in the in a Excel spreadsheet. Now I took the data in order to run this spreadsheet from the U.S. Department of Labor Statistics. This is the pre-pandemic 2019. This is reflective of a small business with one to four employees. Okay, so the, 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 the average annual revenue for a business with one to four employees across the nation is $387,000 annually. That breaks out to $32,250 per month 
that a, that a small business essentially earns as a gross revenue, not as the net. We'll see the net break down here in just a little bit, but the gross revenue. Now there are percentages or averages that are that come out of um, out of those revenues. There are things like materials, and it depends on your your particular trade or your particular profession, but there are materials. There's labor. You have to pay taxes on your labor, Social Security withholding, blah, blah, blah. There are labor with taxes that are involved. Materials are run at about 12% of the uh, of the cost uh, of running a business. Labor with taxes is about 28%, so now we're up to 40%. Taxes are about 6%, and that's uh, things like B&O tax, um, you know, a anything like that, any business taxes that have to be paid to the city, have to be paid to the state, have to be paid to the county. It depends on where you are. Sometimes, like in New York or in California, those taxes are particularly high. You also have some insurance, particularly if you're in the trades. You have errors and omissions insurance. You've got liability insurance. There are lots of insurance things to pay. That runs at about 4% on average, according to the Department of Labor. Equipment costs, particularly if you're in the trades, are going to run about 6%. you got to replace power tools. you got to replace things. So your equipment costs run at about 6%. Of your uh, of your annual revenue, and then you've got other equipment overhead as well. If you have an office, if you've got internet, if you've got uh, phones, if you've got I mean, there's lots of stuff that you have to take care of in terms of your your uh, general overheads. Uh, you you got to have somebody. You know, you're paying somebody to do your taxes. You're paying somebody to keep your books. You know, potentially a, a service provider, an outside service provider, and that can amount to about 18% on average. So those percentages are the average percentages. If you take a look at here, and I'm putting this model up for you to see now. If you take a look at this, you'll see that the monthly revenue is $32,250. Now, Isaac doesn't take any interest on the loan. What Isaac does do, though, is he takes a tithe on the gross. So Isaac is going to take, out of that $32,250, $3,225, that's a tithe off the gross right off the top. Bam, gone. That goes to Isaac. What I've done here in this, uh, in this spreadsheet is I've given you Isaac's cut. This is the part that Isaac gets. The average revenue, the monthly expenses, or the monthly revenue, the monthly expenses, what the expense, expense categories are according to the Department of Labor, the percentage average according to the Department of Labor that comes off of the monthly revenue, and then your cut. You're the business owner. Now, you're taking the risk. You started the business. You're doing the work. Okay. Isaac took 10% off the gross. Bam. Gone. So out of your $32,250 in revenue, which is the average for the U.S. Department of Labor Statistics, Isaac just took $3,225. Then you've got a loan payment. Remember that, remember that loan promissory note that we looked at earlier? You got a loan payment of $1,000 to Isaac. So far, Isaac has taken $4,225. You've also got materials of $3,870 average, uh, labor with taxes $9,030. Then you've got Isaac consuming the tithes on the labor. Now, he's already taken the tithes on the gross. But now, Isaac is going to take the tithes off the labor that are paid. That's an additional $903. That's 10% of the, of the labor including the taxes. Bam! Another 10% or another percentage gone. Okay? Then you've got your taxes, 6%, which is roughly $1,935. You've got your insurance, we're going to say $1,290. Then you've got your equipment costs, that's $1,935, or roughly 6% average, according to the Department of Labor. And you've got your other overheads for, you know, your, your, how to, you know, your cost of doing business, your, your operations costs, printing, business cards, you, you know, everything else that you've got going on. Another $5,805, and about 18% of the monthly revenue is in your, is in overheads, okay? So your total, your total monthly expenses, including Isaac's cut, okay? Your total monthly expenses are $28,993. That includes Isaac's cut for the tithe on the gross, the loan payment, and the tithes on the labor. 
out of that, you're going to receive as the business owner, you're going to receive just about 10%. Okay? You're going to receive $3,257. Isaac has taken over $5,000. You get $3,257. Isaac has taken $5,128. Okay? Now, then Isaac wants ties on your net. You've already given him ties on the gross. You've already given him the ties on the labor, even after you paid the ties on the gross revenue. Now Isaac wants a ties on your net income. Ties on your net income, $326, because you only got $3,257. Isaac has now taken a total of $5,454 if you're running an average business. That's 16.91% of the revenue, of the monthly revenue. 16% of the monthly revenue. Isaac has taken that. Your net income, and you're the guy that's taking all the risk. You're the guy that's doing all the business. You're the guy that's working 16 hours a day if you own the business. You're the guy that's worried about other people doing a good job. You're the guy that's answering the telephone and has to be available. You know, I mean, you, you may be available, you know, six days a week, seven days a week, but you're the guy who's available for that, and your income based on the U.S. Department of Labor statistics, your income out of all of this after Isaac takes his 15.9%, your income is 9.09%. After Isaac takes the tithe, his income goes up to $5,454, which is almost 17%, 16.91%. Your net income after everything is $2,931. And, and that means that Isaac has taken $2,522 more out of your business than you did. And now what are you going to do with that $2,931? You have a family. You, you have to worry about whether or not your family is cared for, whether or not you've got food on the table, whether you're, look at the gas prices, oh my goodness, inflation is eating through that like nobody's business. But you didn't have time to put any money, you didn't have any money to put aside for lean months. Now what happens if, as an example, you got a lean month? You, you still have overheads, you still have labor to pay, you know, I mean, you, you've still got, you still got stuff going on. You've got fixed costs in your overhead. You're still paying for your phone. You're still paying for your internet. You're still paying for your, you know, your potentially your office or your or your warehouse space. If you're, you know, if you're warehousing materials for your jobs, you you still have overheads to cover. You you didn't get to put any money away for those times, right? And yet, according to this business model, Isaac took. 16.91% and you as the business owner took 9%. Wow. That represents just less than twice what the business owner takes. Now, thank goodness Isaac doesn't pay any interest or Isaac uh, he doesn't charge any interest. Aren't you glad? Now, don't forget, don't forget. If you're in the trades, you are expected to offer your time and materials to build a new church facility as a donation to the church. We have, we have information from people that own businesses that say Isaac owed him $32,000 for the building of a home. For the building of a home, Isaac owed them one more payment of $32,000 and change and didn't bother to pay it. He considered it a donation from this person to the church. Are we commingling the church with Isaac and his living area and his family's living area? Is, is, are we doing that? So there's an additional expectation. Above that business model that I just showed you, there, uh, Golden Dawn's building a new fellowship hall. The expectation will be he will exhort people over the pulpit that if you're in the trades, you should be there, all hands on deck, you should be there and you should be helping him build. His labor's free. His labor's free. Uh, well, it's not free to you, but it's free. 
And God forbid you should ever have materials that you put on site. So I understand that there was a whole bunch of paint that went missing at one point. Turns out it was one of Isaac's relatives who took the paint in order to be able to prop up his painting business. So, you know, and, and then, you know, that happened more than once, as I understand it. But, you know, you've got, I mean, you, you, you're making less than Isaac. Now, I didn't, I didn't charge any interest, but you see, it's an adhesion contract. Isaac tells you what the requirements will be. You will pay those tithes on the gross and on the net for labor and on your net, and you'll pay your monthly payment with no interest, no interest. But you're, you're going to pay that. Now, what happens when the business owner discovers that Isaac not, doesn't operate his church correctly and takes a look at everything that's been done in terms of how much money he's given to Golden Dawn and how much money he's given to Isaac from these adhesion contracts, these coercive uh, amounts that Isaac wants, right? Because it's not in the contract, but boy, you had better do it. If you don't, if you're not tithing on the gross, you'll hear about it over the pulpit. If you're not tithing on the net, you'll hear about it. You're going to hear about it, okay? Here's what happens. This is the letter that was sent by a business owner to Isaac Noriega. I'm going to read it for you. This was sent on the 23rd of May, 2022. To whom it may concern, I've been informed that Isaac Noriega, DBA, doing business as Tabernaculo Emmanuel LLC and his church organization, Golden Dawn Tabernacle, is being investigated by different law enforcement agencies for illegal financial operations due to... And now, this comes from, as an example, previous knowledge of tax issues where Isaac had to settle with the IRS. This was an issue that was known inside of the church from the church accountant, the lady that did the accounting for the church. May she rest in peace. This is, this is a situation where this guy's discovering this and other financial irregularities with individuals, with other businesses. And he's saying, wait a minute, I got a great reputation in my business. My, I, built, I have built that business reputation at the expense of having to pay Isaac almost twice the money that I get. I built that reputation of my business. Okay, And, and that business reputation, I cannot put it at risk. I'm not going to put it at risk anymore. Due to the allegations of financial wrongdoing, I, and then he gives his name, will not resume payments until these allegations are cleared, as I do not want our reputation and business to be linked financially to Isaac Noriega, DBA, Tabernaculo Emmanuel, LLC. Additionally, I'm formally requesting an official tax statement for the years 2016, 17, 18, 19, and 2020 for all donations presented to Isaac Noriega, DBA Tabernacle Emmanuel, Tabernaculo Emmanuel LLC. So he's asking something that is totally legitimate here. He's saying, wait, I understand there are some issues as it relates to the finances of the church. I'd like to know that the church is doing things according to Hoyle, according to what churches should be doing. And I'm asking for a tax statement because I don't want to associate myself anymore with somebody who may be doing some wrong doing and I may be viewed as doing wrong doing if I'm if I'm you know if I'm mingling funds with this with the goings ons of the church. Last paragraph, unless these documents are presented and all allegations cleared, I will not resume payments on the outstanding loan. Uh, now remaining as of this date or $25,839 or $59.03. Now that's less than half of what had, I mean, within two years, this particular individual has paid le more than half of the loan payment back. Okay? So let's see what the Bible says. Proverbs, because we that's us. Precept upon precept. Line upon line here a little, there a little. Here's the book of Proverbs. First chapter. 10th through the 19th verse. My son, if sinners entice you, don't be persuaded. If they say, come with us, let us set an ambush and kill someone. Let's attack someone innocent, some innocent person just for fun. Let's swallow them alive like Sheol, still healthy as they go down to the pit. Now this is the important part. We'll find all kinds of valuable property and fill our houses with plunder. If anybody's seen the difference between the average home 
for the people who are in the assembly at Golden Dawn Tabernacle and Isaac Noriega and his family's homes, there is a dramatic delta, dramatic difference between the two. We'll find all kinds of valuable property and fill our houses with plunder. Throw in your lot with us and we'll share our money. Well, Isaac surely loves that because he gets, according to that business model, According to the business model, and you just using the average statistics from the Department of Labor, Labor, Isaac makes a lot more money than the poor guy who's got who's got all the risk and all the headache of running a business. So he thinks that's a great idea. Didn't charge any interest, though. He's not charging interest. Okay. My son, don't travel that road with them or set foot on their path. Further down, such are the paths of all who make profit dishonestly. It takes the lives of those who receive it. Here's the same book, Book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 7. The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is a slave to the lender. Go ahead and take a look at that business model. Again, I've put a link in it. You'll be able to link right to it. I put a link to all of these documents there. They're on my Google Drive. You're welcome to take a look at them. Okay, The borrower is a slave to the lender. According to that business model that I just showed you from the averages uh, issued by the tw in 2019 pre-pandemic by the Department of Labor, that's, boy, is that true. Now, the Department of Labor doesn't say pay your tithes to your pastor on the gross, on the net, on the net. That's not, that's not what the Department of Labor says. That's what Isaac says, but, but that's not what the Department of Labor says. Ezekiel 22, verse 12, people who live in you accept bribes in order to shed blood. You take interest and profit on a loan and brutally extort your neighbors. You have forgotten me. This is the declaration of the Lord God. How does Isaac react when he, when, when, when he gets the letter that basically says, I need to see the tax statements. I'm not paying you anymore until I get the tax statements because I need to know that you're on the up and up. I don't want to associate myself with bad business practices or dishonest business practices. Isaac says, oh, what kind of a Christian are you? Isaac has the temerity to use Psalm 37, verse 21. The wicked man borrows and does not repay, but the righteous one is gracious and giving. After all, says Isaac, I'm only just giving you the money. But what does Isaac say here? He can call the note anytime he wants. Remember, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Really? Guilt trips? That's what we've got? After, after you take those percentages, right, plus the payment, no no interest, plus the payment, you're really going to say what kind of a Christian are you to the guy who wants to be sure that his, businesses isn't, his business isn't associated with a, a criminal activity or a potential criminal activity? Wow. See here, and, and, I'll, and I'll sum all of this up. Here we go. Isaac loans money to businesses which have profit potential. And he collects profit from the business through, co through co coercive means. By the coercive means, I'm talking, of course, about the ties on the gross, the ties on the net, plus the payment. No interest, but the payment. Okay? Isaac commingles church funds with business interests, uh, you know, in his assembly. Were the monies that were given to those businesses, were they from Isaac or were they from the church? How, how does that get benefited? When a, when a tradesperson goes and builds a house for one of Isaac's families and he doesn't pay the final bill, which includes labor and materials, that that man is on the hook for. The business owner is on the hook for that. Because he's got labor. He People went out. The laborer is worthy of his hire. People went out and did the work. It, the businessman has to pay it. He bought materials to finish the home. The businessman has to pay it. Goodness sakes. Isaac, coercive, Isaac coercively collects tithes far in, excess any, far in excess of anything expected, even in the covenant of works and atonement. If you take a look at the Old Testament, which is in an effect now, but there was a transition. Remember Christ died on the cross, that transition? In the Mosaic Law, which applies to the Jews, and I'm a Gentile, and so are you, most, 
well, I'd say all of you. But here we've got, you know, Isaac is saying, no, 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 court, no, 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 tithes are a thing, right? William Branham said tithes are a thing, so you got to pay me the tithes. That's not even tithes. Let's let's take a step back and remember in the in the covenant of atonement or the covenant covenant of works what the tithes was all about. The tithes was take ten percent, put it in the storehouse, so that people who needed it could come and get some because they need it because something happened a natural disaster. The tithes weren't monies necessarily; they were also grain and wine and olive oil and wheat and flour and th those products, the grains were stored in the storehouse. Then when regions had issues, they'd go to the king and they'd say, we, you know, we got to have these tithes because we had this natural disaster. And they would be able to draw off of those tithes. In this particular instance, what are we doing? Do the tithes really, I mean, they go to the church slash Isaac because there's such a commingling of the funds, it's hard to tell the difference. But do, do they really go to help people who are in distress? Or do they go to enrich the church and the family members of the church? I want to remind people, as we're all done here, I want to remind people of Proverbs 11, 28 through 31. He that trusteth in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind, and the fool shall be the servant of, to the wise in heart. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. You think Isaac is winning any souls or bringing anybody over to see his side of things when he coercively takes that much money from business owners? Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. Now, we're going to take a look later on. The next video that we do is going to be about people who have suffered at the hands of Golden Dawn's assembly in terms of breaking up the family unit, in terms of destroying the family unit. And we're going to see lots of stories. We're going to have discussions with people, and we're going to have quotes from people that talk about that specifically. I just wanted to bring this to everybody's attention. It took us a little while. I wanted to make sure that we had all of our documentation in place. There's other documentation that we have, not just about this instance, but about other instances as well. We'll see how that. We'll see how the videos go, and we'll see if we want to roll any of those out. Uh, if we want to take a look, but if anybody wants to take get in touch with us, the end card here is going to give you all the information you need to reach out and touch bases with us. We also, you're, feel free to take a look at any of the documentations that we have posted on the, on the Google Drive. Um, and, and remember, <clears throat> we're just using the U.S. Department of Labor Statistics pre-pandemic 2019 small business with one, or four, one to four employees. I'm sure there are larger businesses that do better, and I'm sure those ties grow as it relates to uh, how many people they have employed. Just wanted to walk through this with you. Hope everybody's doing really well. We're halfway through 2022, and we look forward to talking to everybody. And again, if you need any of our help, please feel free to reach out and let us know. God bless you. We love you. And have a great rest of your 2022 now. Bye-bye.